Good evening, everybody. It's good to have you join us tonight for Wednesday night Bible study and prayer time at First Baptist Church, Springfield, 141 Springfield Church Road in Rogersville, Alabama. My name is Marty Mosley. I'm the pastor there. And again, it's, it's good to see each one of you out tonight. Uh, we've got several folks already tuning in, as well as the family here and uh, just outside of Studio A in, uh, in Grassy, Alabama. And uh, we'll get started here in, in just a minute with uh, some prayer requests. And uh, let's take a look at, at those right now. Got a few updates uh, just right before we went on. Uh, but let's, let's remember our leaders, as uh, most all of you know already, uh, Governor Ivey in her press conference yesterday, uh, opened up uh, safer at home order uh, that's going to take place starting uh, tomorrow at 5 p.m. through uh, May 15th and uh, so uh, no still saying no gatherings at above 10 so let's uh, let's keep that in mind and uh, remember our leaders as they continue to to meet and discuss uh, what's what's best, what they feel is best for us. Be uh, and their workers. So uh, be several workers going back to work uh, Friday morning, and that's uh, let's remember them. And uh, there's still some that uh, won't be able to go back to work, and uh, let's remember them. Uh, uh, remember our church. Uh, We've been getting a lot of information about uh, what to do when we do open back up, and uh, we'll be discussing more of that as time goes along. But uh, what what I the main idea I get out of uh, some of the information is is that we need to practice the same thing we did uh, if you remember back to March fifteenth uh, that morning about the not passing the offering plates and uh, having no fellowship time. They recommend that our uh, front doors be propped open where nobody has to touch the door uh, coming in. And uh, I guess also propped open as we, as we leave. So just uh, several things that we'll have to get in place before uh, they do allow us to gather together with more than 10 people. Uh, Ask you to remember Jerry Green. He is uh, still in the hospital, and this is the family we've been mentioning now for several weeks. Uh, Jerry's dad and older brother both passed away from the COVID virus, and uh, he is still in the hospital. And I ask you to remember him. If you, uh, the next uh, line there, Hannah Jordan and Judson Rowe, they have uh, moved. Uh, areas in alaska this is the couple that moved uh, to alaska and uh, they're expecting a baby in june elliot jane role is uh due to come, arrive in in june so remember them they're, they're now at first baptist church willow they've moved from i think uh just outside of toke alaska to first baptist willow they're living in the parsonage there and uh uh, remember this uh, sweet family as you pray. Uh, uh, again, a little girl scheduled to arrive in, in June. Got a message uh, just a few minutes ago from Glendora. 
Uh, we need to remember male coffee, or excuse me, male Kali, uh, C O L L E Y, and his significant other Renee. They both had COVID, have COVID 19. Uh, male is the son of a former co worker of Glendora's, uh, Hollis Jenkins. So let's, uh, let's remember. Uh, remember them in our prayers as well. So right now, let's let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll get to look at some announcements. Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for this opportunity to meet tonight and the technology to do it with. We ask you to be with Mayo and Renee, Lord, and uh, you help them recover from this uh, disease as well as Jerry Green. We ask you to uh, be with him. And Lord, there's there's many others, Lord, that uh, are suffering tonight from this awful disease. And Lord, uh, we ask you to heal them, to uh, uh, heal them. And Lord, uh, I, uh, as we've prayed uh, just about this whole time, uh, when we when we meet together, Lord, you you've got the power to reach down and stop this virus. And Lord, I ask you to do that. Uh, be with these doctors and nurses, Lord, as they tend to these patients and the scientists as they uh, seek out a vaccine uh, for this and uh, and uh, medicine for this. Uh, Lord, we, I saw today that uh, some folks down at UAB is, uh, are doing some work toward finding uh, medicine for this. And Lord, uh, just be with them all, Lord, and uh, be with our church, Lord, uh, Someday in the not too distant future, Lord, we'll be going to be getting back together. And Lord, we, we ask you for, to keep us safe, keep all the churches safe. And Lord, uh, we uh, ask you to be with our leaders of our land, that uh, you'll uh, give them the wisdom that they need to make the decisions that uh, uh, are in alignment with your will. And Lord, I uh, ask you to be with the Roll family up in Alaska. Lord, and uh, as they have made this move to a new town uh, and the uh, baby arriving in June, we ask you to be with them. And Lord, just be with us tonight as we look to your word. And uh, we thank you for all these things in Jesus name. Amen. One thing I did not mention, uh, the Mosleys of North Grassy will be, Lord willing, be experiencing some uh, changes over the next uh month or so and uh just be in prayer that uh for all that and uh remember that our live stream services will be uh on sunday at 10 50 a.m and 6 p.m and we hope you make plans to join us for that remember that if you can't make it can't see it on uh, facebook live uh, i do uh, download those, post them to YouTube. You can find them uh, by searching for me. And then there's a Springfield First Baptist folder on my page on YouTube. And you can see all of the services that we've had. Uh, also uh, on Twitter, I share that link through the church's Twitter page at Springfield FBC1. Also retweet that. Uh, to my personal page. Uh, again, uh, my name is Marty Mosley, and I'm, I'm thankful for each one of you joining in. Uh, I think I've said this already. The, uh, that uh, Anna, Amy, and Jenna are all in there. Li having, they having to li listen over the, through this speaker here that I've got hooked up. Uh, Samantha, it's good to have all y'all. We got... Uh, the Elams of South Elgin and one Robbins and one future Robbins are all present in South Elgin. We thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, Miss Deb Hovatter, uh, Mark and Debbie Carroll, uh, the Campbells of uh, part, part, uh, part of the Campbell, all uh, the Campbells from Mitchelltown are there. And uh, Lenny and Vicki, we appreciate y'all listening everybody listening in tonight uh, uh nick norton's listening in again uh, he asked us to pray for him and the girls and uh and uh god bless uh 
everybody. And uh, we'll pause here in just a minute and, and pray for Nick and his girls. Uh, Miss Ginger Cole, one of the teachers at Legacy Christian Academy, is tuning in tonight. Jimmy and Glendora are watching. Uh, Miss Judy Mason is watching. Uh, Bob and Brenda are watching. Uh, Jason Buckaloo, Miss Deborah Haney, Miss Diane, this is Miss Nail Taylor's daughter, is watching. Uh, James and Jackie Gully are watching. Uh, Melanie is watching, and Miss Barbara and Mr. Terry are tuning in. And we, we again, we thank thank all y'all for watching tonight. As we said Sunday evening, we're going to be in in Mark. Uh, chapter number 14 so if you want to get your uh, bibles and uh, be turning there we're going to have them up on the screen well i think we'll read uh, verses uh, 22 through 26 first and uh, it would have been a good going through these verses here it'd have been a good time to have the lord's supper you know but we had it on if you remember the evening on, on easter but this is the uh, uh, the first verses we're going to be discussing tonight are uh, when he instituted the Lord's Supper. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, uh, from the video we watched several years ago about the Passover, how the, the Jewish people, the Jews, uh, do the Passover. That cup goes around seven times, and uh, J. Vernon McGee says that on the, on the seventh trip around is when he instituted uh, the Lord's Supper. So uh, let's read verses uh, 22 through 26 of, of uh, Mark chapter 14. And then we'll have a word of prayer and we'll remember Nick and uh, his girls as we do that this evening. Uh, Mark 14 verses 22 through 26. And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. Verse 24 through 26, and he said unto them, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drank it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Let's, let's bow our heads for word, another word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for you allowing us to be together tonight and the technology to do so. Thank you for each one that's uh, joining in tonight and those that will join in. We want to lift up Nick and his family uh, to you tonight. Lord, you uh, know their needs. You know the situation. And we just ask you blessings upon him and his family. And uh, Lord, again, just uh, bless your word tonight. And uh, show us the things we need to know to grow closer to you. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's good to have Miss Wanda Hearn tuning in tonight. She is uh, says she's missing everyone in the church family. Miss Wanda, we miss you and do as uh, miss everybody as well. So uh, if we'll look back to uh, verse uh, 22, and uh, I'll get my screen here back up there. So as they did eat, so it was in the process of this, and as J. Vernon McGee points out, it was more than likely the seventh time around uh, that he is about to cut when he passed it. So as they did eat, Jesus took bread, blessed, and break it. Now, uh, some things we need, uh, if you are if you got a Bible like mine, each, uh, the Matthew, Luke, and also in uh, Mark here, as we just read, and uh, 1 Corinthians, I'll talk about the Lord's Supper. John, however, talks about a little bit more 
uh, in more detail of what went on in the upper room than the other gospels. Uh, he he de devotes five chapters to the events of that upper room. And Mark here, uh, of course, John was under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit when he wrote what he wrote. Mark is under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as he writes what he writes. He uh, only talks about two events in the uh, in the upper room and uh, just a little bit of brief detail. So we're going to try to to uh, add just a little bit, uh, go turn a few places and see uh, what else uh, uh we can dig on on these not not that mark 14 not sufficient but we're going to try to to get some other verses to go along with that not really talking about the lord's supper there to, per se but about jesus giving his body and giving his blood now uh so the first act of the lord's supper now uh is is of course the the bread and this symbolizes, of course, as we know, as we read there in verse 22, it symbolizes his body. And uh, one writer points out that this symbolizes his death was a voluntary act. He took the bread, blessed it, and he broke it and gave to them. Uh, he didn't have to go to the cross. He did it voluntarily. He did not have to die. He did it voluntarily he did that for each one of us uh if you'll look over with me to john chapter 10 we're going to look at uh, three different verses well we might as well get four i'm going to have three here on the screen but we'll go ahead and since verse 16 is right there and amongst all of them we're going to look at john chapter 10 verses 15 through 18 now you'll notice on the screen that verse 16 ain't there but uh while we're there, we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about it. So John chapter 10, verses 15 through 18, talks about uh, him uh, giving his body for us. So John 10 and verse 15 says, As the Father knoweth me, even so I, uh, even so know I, the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, the hireling, if you if you remember in his discussion in the Gospels, the hire, hireling's going to flee because he he's just been he's he care less. He, he's there to make some money, and but the good shepherd, he laid down his life for us. Verse 16 says, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold. He's talking about you and I right there. They am also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Ain't that nice? That there is to be no division. We can uh, get together with a group of believers. We can get together with the bunch, uh, with uh, no matter what church they tend. They may be some differences, but friends, when we get right down to the knit grit, down where the rubber meets the road, do we all agree that Jesus came? He was born of a virgin. He lived a perfect life. He went to the cross, gave himself up willingly, hung there on the cross, shed his blood, died for you, died for me, died for the sins of the whole world. Can we agree? on that if we can then we can have fellowship with one another they may be some differences on some other things but can we agree on that died on the cross was buried and on the third day he arose now uh i know there's a lot of folks that apparently come up with another jesus that says he was not virgin born but the jesus that i serve the jesus that died for me according to the scripture was born of a virgin so uh other sheep i'm gonna bring them they're gonna hear my voice and there shall be one fold one shepherd not not one for everybody not one for all the differences but one for all verse 17 therefore doth the father doth my father 
love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. Now, if we hear that, now, this is John chapter 10 that we're reading. And uh, when he went to the cross, when he arose, as we read on, on Easter morning, uh, it was like they'd never heard this before. But there he is in John chapter 10. He, uh, in John chapter 20, chapter 19 is when he went to the cross in the book of John. Here in John chapter 10, he says, I lay, twice, 15 and 17, I lay down my life, verse 17, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down to myself. I have power to lay it down. Amen. And I have power to take it again. Amen. This commandment have I received of my father. He didn't have to do it, but he did it willingly. And as uh he broke the bread. He he gave thanks. Uh, Brother Butler, we didn't talk about him Sunday in the evening, I don't think. Brother Butler said, before we eat, we don't do like the animals do and just dig in. We offer up thanks. And Jesus here gives us a picture of that in uh, the word here when he uh, gave thanks and then break it again took took the bread took it in his hands as if he symbolizing his death as a voluntary act he took it break it just like he gave of his body he gave it to them and said take eat this is my body symbolizing that his body was to be broken sacrifice as a victim for man's deliverance and we find that in the, the book of isaiah Chapter 53 and verse, verse number five, if you want to turn over with me, Isaiah 53 and verse number five. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes, we are healed. The act was so significant that the early church sometimes called the Lord's Supper simply the breaking of bread. We find that in the book of Acts chapter 2, also in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Under the Old Testament, the broken bread pictured the sufferings of the Israelites. Now in the New Testament, the bread was to picture the broken body of Christ. So he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Who, why, why? He was bruised. It says our. If, if, if it was nobody else but me, he'd have went to the cross just for me. But the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2 that uh, he is the propitiation for our sins, not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. So with his stripes, we are healed. He gave the, the bread to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Meaning that we're, we're supposed to take Christ and receive him into our life. Now, there, there are some that I've run into over the years that uh, God is having the Lord's Supper? Is that, is that all that's going on at church? Uh, then I won't, uh, I think I'll just stay home. I'm not running into folks like that. Uh, they try, try to kind of treat the Lord's Supper kind of like what uh, a lot of people treat business meetings uh 
Y'all just having a business meeting? I, I, well, I'm just going to stay home. Well, when we take that bread, it's reminding us how we took on Christ, how Christ came to live within us. One other place we want to look, and then we'll start talking about a little bit about the blood that he shed. If you'll turn with me to John chapter 6, verses 50 and 51. John chapter 6, verses 50 and 51. In verse 50 of John chapter 6, it says, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Amen. He had just told them that, talked to him about the manna that came down from heaven and uh, that the, the their fathers that he was talking to had eat that bread and they're now dead. But he says, I'm the bread that comes down from heaven that if a man partake of it, of me, he can eat thereof and not die. Have everlasting life. Everlasting life. Verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give again is my flesh, his body, which I will give for the life of the world. So when when we have opportunity, ever how often it is, to partake of the Lord's Supper, remember what 1 Corinthians 11 says, as often as you drink it, as often as you eat it, as often as you take this, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Oh, we're so thankful that he came and gave his life for us. I'm thankful that he came and that he gave his life for me. The second part of the Lord's Supper is when he took the cup. And he does, does the same thing again. He, he gave thanks for the cup. Now, uh, again, a uh, symbol that, a, an example that we should give thanks before we put the stuff in our mouth that we put, whether it's a uh, steak, whether it's a uh, plate of pinto beans or, or whatever, whatever the Lord has given us to eat. And if you look back with me to verse 23 again, we'll, we'll see that again, that he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, and every one of them, every one of them drank of it. So what does that represent? It represents his blood that he shed for us again he gave thanks he gave the cup they all drank of it he was saying that he must become a part of a man's very being if he wishes deliverance the word gave means that he gave the cup once for all he died once and that's all he had to, had to do that was one time if you'll look over with me to Romans chapter number six, verse number six and verse number 10. Romans chapter six, verse six and verse number 10. Romans six and verse six says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. He went to the cross gave up his body, shed his blood for, for us, and our old man is crucified with him on the cross. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve 
sin. He gave his body, gave his blood that we, that the old man might be put to the cross too and that we might not serve sin. So I hope that we can see that the Lord's Supper is not something we just need to glance at and say, hmm, if that's all we're doing, we'll just stay home. Verse 10, for in that he died, he did it once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. In the Galatians, we ain't got this to throw up on the screen, but uh, just something to add in. Goes along with what verse six says. Galatians two and verse twenty says this: "I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live; yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God." who loved me and gave himself for me. So a man must receive what Christ has done for him. He must drink, partake, absorb Christ's blood into his life. That is, a man must believe and trust the death of Christ to forgive his sins. He must allow Christ's death to become the very nourishment, the innermost part and energy the very flow of his life. Now let's look back to verse number 25. We'll look to verse 24 and 25 if I can get my mouse to go behave and go where it's supposed to go. As he passed that cup, he told them, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Who did he shed that blood for? Everybody. Everybody. I want to remind you about the verse we quoted uh, Sunday. We quoted it many times, Romans 10, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So he shed that blood for many. Verse 25 says, Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. In other words, the kingdom coming, that was promise. And it ought to be a point of celebration that the kingdom is coming. We look around us today and we, we see things that are going on. Uh, I've, I've noticed on Facebook and Twitter and uh, the news, there's people aggravated that uh, everything ain't opened up like they thought it was going to be. Well, just let me let you in on something that I told Amy before it ever happened yesterday. What I told Amy, I said, whatever the governor, the governor does, there's going to be somebody unhappy. If she would have opened everything up, there would have been a group of people just like now saying she shouldn't have done that. She shouldn't have done it. Don't know what she's thinking. But instead, she took the conservative approach. Doc, medical folks still wanting to try to protect us. You, some people say, well, they're taking away our freedom. Well, we can look at it however you want to. But I guarantee you, if we were suffering from this illness, we might have a different say. But he says, I will drink no more of it until that day that I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Both those promises, the celebration, the 
promise of a kingdom that's coming. Jesus promised to die when all genu genuine believers would sit down with him in the kingdom of God. Now that's something to look forward to. I'm looking forward to us getting back together, us meeting together again, but so much the more I'm looking forward to sitting down with Jesus Christ and being able to do that for all eternity in the kingdom of God. Look at verse 26. We always, I, I think we've always done that since I've been at Springfield. Whenever we take, partake of the Lord's Supper, we sing a hymn. Most time it's amazing grace, maybe the first verse, but when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. So one writer puts this, says this, the fourth act of the Lord's Supper involved the singing of a hymn. Despite the sorrow and uncertainty of what lay ahead, they sang a hymn. Now, he told them some things that were going to go on. He knew, of course, what was fixing to happen. But they sang a hymn in celebration of the great hope that God del gives deliverance and God gives salvation. And that comes through the person of Jesus Christ. So before they went out, they sang a hymn. The next section of scripture we're going to look at is uh, verses 27 through 31. If you'll turn your Bibles to there, and we'll uh, read those verses and then go back and, and make a few comments. We'll start out with, uh, again, verse 27. I'm going to read down through verse number 31. Mark 14, starting in verse number 27. And Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. But after that, I am risen. Now here you tell them again. Just, just a little while. The, the, now, if you remember our timeline, this is Thursday evening. He went to the cross the next day, and then on Sunday, he's risen again. He said, but after that I am risen, I will go before you into Galilee. Verse 29, but Peter said unto him, although all shall be offended, yet will not I. Now he's fixing to burst Peter's bubble by telling Peter what he's fixing to do in just, just a little while. Jesus said to him, verily I say unto thee, that this day, even in this night, before the cock crow twice, you're going to deny me thrice. You're going to deny me three times. And then in verse 31, but he spake the more vehemently, vehemently, if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise also said they all. Want to uh, put this thought into all of our minds. And this is it. How many of us after a rain look up into the eastern sky and thank the Lord for that rainbow? Now, remembering back to about seven close to seven years ago. I remember us going through, going through the book of uh, Genesis and talking about that rainbow. And then for the next several weeks, seemed like every evening I would come to church, whether it's on Wednesday 
or on Sunday. It seemed like it each week, each time I could look over into the eastern sky and see God's handiwork, that rainbow stretched out across the sky, being so thankful. You say, well, what kind of reminder are you giving us this time? What about hearing a rooster crow? Now, I know that some of us may not have any roosters around us. But maybe when we hear, do hear a rooster crow, we'll bow down to the great physician and get everything right with him. Just a reminder. Just a reminder. But here he tells them what's fixing to happen. That he's going to the cross and they're all going to be scattered. Now, throughout his, his ministry here with these guys, how often had he told them stuff that did not happen? You say, well, he, he never told them anything that wasn't going to happen. Then why is Peter arguing with him? Why is Peter arguing with the Lord? Because what he told them, it was fixing to take place. What he told them, it was fixing to take place. But I want to tell you this. Are we going to slip up? We're human. We don't need to plan to slip up. We don't need to go out of our way like we talked about Judas last week and find a convenient way to sin. But I want you to know this. No matter how bad the failure, the Lord is still there. We can repent and return to Christ. Rest assured, of a glorious reunion. Was Peter sincere here? Mm-hmm. He was. He did, he did not intend, as we see here. Uh, no, I'm I'm gonna, he was serious. I, I'm not gonna deny thee. I'm if I if I should die with thee, I would. Remind you what verse 31 says. But he spoke the more vehemently. If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. And likewise, they all said that. And whenever we hear a cock crow, we ought to be reminded, a rooster crow, we ought to be reminded that about the weakness of our flesh. Oh, but by the grace of God, go I. We might stand back and say, well, I, I wouldn't have been like Peter. I wouldn't have denied him. What about the last time the Holy Spirit told you to say a word for the Lord? Did we? Did you? Did I? Are we like Peter later on in life over in Acts chapter 12? Uh, not so, Lord. Not me. Not right now. Mm-mm. Maybe later. Maybe somebody else will come by and do it, but not right now. And we're going to find as we go on down through the book of Mark that exactly what the Lord said, exactly what the Lord said happened for the cock crowed, for the rooster crowed, Peter had denied him three times. Not once. Not once. But three times, just as the Lord said. They was all scattered, just as the Lord said. We're going to find that. We're going to find Peter denied him three times, just as the Lord said. We'll stop there in uh, verse number 31. Again, uh, we thank you all for tuning in. Miss Bonnie Literal is tuned in, and she's waving. And uh, Let me get more at angle. We'll wave back at Miss Bonnie, wave at uh, 
everybody. And again, we, we thank y'all for, for tuning in tonight. Uh, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. We'll talk about uh, uh, what's coming up again on, on Sunday. And uh, let's, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you, Lord, uh, for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are tonight and the technology to do so. And Lord, we're thankful, thankful for your word. Thank you for going to the cross, giving your body, shedding your blood that through your work on the cross, through your work of going to the grave, and raising victoriously over that grave, through you, through your work, not ours, through your work, we can have eternal life. And Lord, uh, the next opportunity we have to meet together and to partake of the Lord's Supper, may we not take it lightly because it's a celebration of what you've done for us on the cross. And Lord, uh, help us to be about your business. Even in this time of quarantine, Lord, things are opening back up, but help us to be about your business. Ask you to bless each one. And Lord, uh, we thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to remind you that uh, Sunday morning, we'll be back online at 10.50 and again at 6 p.m. And we hope that uh, it, each, uh, each one will uh, be able to tune back in with us on Sunday, 10.50 and at 6 p.m. Uh, and we uh, got a few more. And Miss Melanie's pointing out to me that uh, Miss Diane, Daniel Hollinsworth, and Sabrina Vickery joined us tonight. And we thank y'all as well as everyone that tuned in. Remember that I love you. But most of all, remember that God loves you. I hope everyone has a, a good evening and uh, is able to join us again on Sunday, again at 10.50 and at 6 p.m. Good night, everybody.